Welcome to the Pika MicroWarp VoIP Firewall introduction and installation video. Just Google PBX hacking or toll fraud and you can learn all about the millions of dollars of fraudulent call activity that are being routed through IPPBXs just like yours. Your IPPBX all of a sudden becomes a hub for criminals phone traffic. Then you're left paying the bills. Our device monitors the SIP traffic coming into your IPPBX and identifies and blocks fraudulent activity. We protect your IPPBX 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. And there's no pre-configuration required to install our device. The product that does this is the MicroWarp VoIP Firewall. Pika's MicroWarp VoIP Firewall is an innovative product designed to protect your IPPBX regardless of the brand of IPPBX against VoIP based network attacks. We prevent the fraudulent activity from reaching your PBX. We are not a data firewall instead focusing only on SIP traffic. The MicroWarp Firewall operates at layer 2 with no IP address allowing it to appear invisible, thus making it extremely difficult to detect or interact with. It analyzes SIP packets through deep packet inspection and quietly drops undesirable traffic to prevent continued attacks. We can handle around 50 concurrent calls, so it's ideal for the SME market. The device uses a low latency network processor to process packets at close to wire speeds while protecting against many common VoIP attacks. It protects against attacks such as SIP denial of service, theft of service and SIP user account probes. It also protects against malicious attack scripts like SIP Vicious, Voiper and Cybus, which are all freely downloadable from the internet. Unfortunately, it does not take much education these days to become a toll fraud criminal. The great thing about the device is that it's easily installed to protect your IPPBX. But note, this device does not protect your individual phones connected to a cloud or hosted PBX. The device requires no special skills and absolutely no configuration. The device comes with a standard USB power cable that plugs into the USB port on either end of the device. The alternate red and green will blink until the device is activated and then it will turn solid green. The device sits in line with your Ethernet connection by plugging RJ45 cables on both sides. In terms of where the device should be placed in the network, it should sit directly in front of the IPPBX as close as possible, preferably behind the corporate data firewall, router, modem or gateway. Doing this optimizes the amount of traffic passing through the device and allows the device visibility to SIP messaging. The device is not capable of monitoring VLAN, VPN or SIP TCP connections. To ensure the device is working you can refer to the LEDs on the unit. The network lights on the end of the unit indicate physical connection and network activity. The LEDs in the middle of the unit indicate the firewall status. Green indicates the device is operational. The lights will blink red if the device detects attack. Solid red means an endpoint is blocked. If you wish to get more information about the firewall operation, a USB key, FAT formatted, can be used to collect logs. When inserted into the MicroWarp VoIP firewall, the LEDs will flash green. After a few minutes, a series of logs will be produced and the key can be removed. These logs can be viewed on a PC. The logs are written to the USB key real time. There is no caching of logs on the device itself. Once the USB is plugged into the PC, you'll find many files. Under the MicroWarp log files directory, you can find the firmware version in a text file. As well, in the MicroWarp folder, in the PKVSF log, you can find a runtime account of the actions of the firewall. From these logs, we can see in the red highlighted section that there have been dropped packets from known attackers. In the yellow highlighted section, there is a list of any failing authentication attempts. This could potentially be someone continuously failing to provide a correct password. In this case, user 1001. If this happens past the default threshold of 9 attempts, the firewall will block this account for 5 minutes. In the blue highlighted section, there is a list of different source IPs which are blacklisted. 
or ones which have made requests to several different user accounts, likely an account probe. In this example, the second IP in the list is being blocked because of suspected account probing. The last three IP addresses have been blacklisted. If you do want to change the thresholds or configure blacklist, there's a simple configuration file which can be applied to the unit through USB. Setting these parameters are optional and only necessary if you want to customize the behavior of the unit. For a complete listing of firmware and documentation for the Micro Warp Firewall, you can visit www.picatech.com. On the top tab, select Support and Downloads. From this page, navigate to the Micro Warp Firewall section. And on this page, you can find data sheets, FAQs, configuration guides, webinars, as well as any notices and new firmware. This concludes the video and hopefully this gives you a good idea of the product and its installation. For more information you can go to our website www.picatech.com. If you wish to purchase the product you can contact Pika Sales, sales at picatech.com. If you have support questions you can contact support, support at picatech.com or our phone number as shown. Thank you.